Hello everyone, welcome to the Sandpoint Onstream YouTube channel. In this video, we will be doing the complete analysis of the KPTCL Assistant Engineer exam for the Civil Engineering branch which was held on 24 July 2022 that is yesterday. So if we talk about the level of the exam, so it can be kept somewhat between moderate to difficult level and about 50% of the questions were numerical type questions. And if we talk about the subjects from where the questions have been asked, so we can say that almost all the subjects have been covered thoroughly. So these are the subjects from the technical portion and these are the subjects from the general studies portion. So the high weighted subjects were RCC and PSC, 8 number of questions, then BMC and concrete technology, 6 questions, geotechnical and survey, both having 7 questions each. Strength of material 6 question, fluid mechanics and open channel 6 question, structural analysis 7 question, environmental engineering 8 number of questions. While in the GS part, the maximum weightage was given to the current affairs and GK. So total 13 questions appeared from this section. So now let's start the discussion of the paper in more detail where we will be solving each of the questions. So let's begin. So here we have our first question in which we have to identify the incorrect statement among the following four statements and this question is from the steel structures. So first statement is saying that the maximum edge distance of the fastener from an edge should not exceed 12 times of t. So we know that as per the code the maximum edge distance is given as 12 times of t multiplied by epsilon naught and this epsilon naught is given as under root of 250 divided by Fy. So in this statement the epsilon naught value we have to consider equal to 1. So this value will become 1 when my Fy value is 250. That means the steel which we are using that is a mild steel. So in that case epsilon naught will take the value of 1. And if we substitute epsilon naught equal to 1 in this equation the maximum edge distance will come out to be 12 times of so this statement A is correct. Then coming to statement B. So B statement says that for the compression members if we are using the tack bolts so the maximum pitch that is allowed is 600 mm. So this statement is also correct as per code this is the clause which is given that the maximum pitch which is allowed in the case of the compression member where tack bolts are used the maximum pitch can be kept as 600 mm. So this statement is also correct. Second one. Coming to third one, so the minimum pitch for the bolts in case of compression member it should not exceed 16T or 200 mm whichever is minimum. Now here the code says that instead of 16T this value should be 12 times of T for the compression member. While if we talk about the tension members the minimum pitch of the bolt can be kept as 16T or 200. But since compression member is given, so the value should be 12T or 200 mm whichever is less. So this statement is incorrect and we have to identify incorrect statement here. So option C will be our correct answer. While coming to the fourth statement that is the grip length of the bolt if it exceeds 5 times the diameter of the bolt the design shear capacity is reduced. So this statement is also correct that when the grip length is more than 5 times the diameter of the bolt then it is experienced and observed that the design shear capacity gets reduced. So this statement is also correct. So only incorrect statement is option C which is our answer. The next problem they are asking what are the minimum grades of concrete that we use for the pre-tension and post-tension beam. A similar question has been asked in J exam also there they have asked what is the minimum grade for pre-tension concrete but here they are asking for both. So the correct answer for this is option B. So for pre-tension the minimum grade is 40 while for the post-tension it is 30. Coming to the next one third problem. So as per again IS 343 that means it is again from the pre-stress concrete only. So here we have to tell which among the following is the correct formula for the ultimate moment of resistance. So it is a straightforward formula directly coming from the code. So here we can see there are various parameters like FPB, APS, D and XU. So FPB is basically the tensile stress which will be developed in the tendons at the time of failure. 
APS is the area of the pre-tensioning tendons in the tension zone and D is the effective depth of the beam and XU is the depth of the neutral axis. So these are the various parameters and this equation we use to calculate the ultimate moment of resistance. Now coming to the fourth problem, in fourth problem we have to select which type of weld do we generally use under various circumstances. So first statement is the structural member subjected to direct tension or compression. So here we generally provide the butt weld. You might have solved numericals based on that. So suppose we are having two plates, something like this. And here the force that we are applying, it can be say tension or compression. So I'm showing it as say tension force. So here when we are connecting these two members, so that time the type of weld that we provide here, that is basically called as the butt weld. So our first statement is going to match with the fifth statement. Then when we have to join two surfaces at right angle, that time we go for the fillet weld. So suppose this is my first member, this is my second member. So at the junction, the weld which I am going to provide here, this weld is called as fillet weld. So the second statement, it matches with the third that is fillet weld. Then a hole is made in one of the components and the welding is done around the periphery. So this is basically called as a slot weld. So here what we do is, suppose we have a member like this. This is first member and this is second member. Now generally the welding will be done something like this on the edges. But suppose if the length of the weld is not sufficient. So in such a scenario, we can make a slot over here and here also we can do the welding to increase the length of the weld. So this is called as the slot welding. So my third statement will go with the first option that is the slot weld. And in case the pressure is applied continuously, so there the weld which we are going to provide is called as the seam weld. So fourth will go with two. So if we see which option is correct. So option A is the correct answer. One matches with five. 2 matches with 3, 3 matches with 1 and 4th matches with 2nd. So option A is the correct answer for this. Now next problem is again from the precess concrete. Here a post tension simply supported beam is given whose span is 8 meter. So total span is given as 8 meter and we are using the curved cable whose cross section area is known and the slope is also given to us. And the initial stress that we are keeping is 1200 MPa. The Young's modulus of steel is given as 210 GPa. And now they are asking we need to calculate the loss due to the slip of 2 mm at the jacking end. So how much will be the loss due to the anchorage slip that we need to calculate over here. So for this we need to remember a formula. The loss will be calculated using this formula. Delta upon L multiply by the Young's modulus of the steel where delta is the value of the slip in this case the delta is given as 2 mm length of the beam is known to us that is 8 meter so we can multiply it by 10 raised to power 3 in order to convert it into mm multiply by 210 now here the answers or the options which are given to us that are in MPA but this ES is in GPA so I am going to convert it into MPA by multiplying by 10 raised to power 3. So on solving this, the answer that we get is 52.5 MPa. So option A is correct over here. Now sixth problem here, they are asking us if we are provided with a plate whose width is 140 mm. Now we need to tell how many maximum number of bolts can be accommodated here in one single row. So suppose this is given as 140 mm. This is the total width and here we have to arrange the bolts in one single row so I am showing some bolts over here randomly I am taking any number of bolts so we have to calculate how many can be accommodated here now we know that here the distance from the edge this is called as edge distance I am writing it as E same way at this end also we will be having one edge distance and between two bolts the distance is called as pitch so the distance between any two bolts will be called as pitch so we can write or mark it as p 
so this is p now here the total sum of all the pitches and the end distance should be equal to 140 mm this will be our equation so how many total number of pitches are there so suppose n number of bolts are there then n minus 1 will be the number of pitches so one less pitch will be there in comparison to the number of bolts like in this case how many bolts we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 bolts are there but only 5 pitches are available that is the distance between the bolts so now I can write the equation that n minus 1 this is the number of pitches multiply by p plus 2 times of how many n distance are there 2 n distances are there so 2 times of e this should be equal to 140 m so this becomes my equation now here the unknown parameter is n that is how many maximum number of bolts can be accommodated now here the value of p and e we need to calculate first so p will be taken as p minimum and e will be taken as e minimum why i am saying this because we have to accommodate maximum number of bolts so for accommodating maximum number of bolts the e and p should take their minimum values now the minimum value of p is given by 2.5 times of d while the e minimum is given as 1.5 times of d naught now what is d and d naught d is the diameter of the bolt and d naught is the diameter of the hole so here if i substitute the value so this will be 2.5 multiply by 20 so this will be 50 mm and here it will be 1.5 multiply by now what will be the diameter of the hole so as per the code we have to add 2 mm in this so 22 mm will be the diameter of the hole so on calculating this will be 33 mm now we can substitute these values in our above equation so here if i substitute the values so this will become n minus 1 multiply by p minimum which is 50 plus 2 into 33 is equal to 140 so from here if we solve the value of n will come out as 2.48 that means we can accommodate maximum two number of bolts even three bolts cannot be accommodated so the maximum number of bolts that we can accommodate that is two so option c is the correct answer for sixth problem now coming to the seventh so here they are asking in psc we generally used high grade of concrete so what is the reason for that so if we look at the options all the options seems to be correct the reason for providing the high grade concrete contributes to all of the following that means there will be reduction in shrinkage reduction in deflection reduction in creep and reduction in elastic shortening but here we have to pick the best option so out of these the best option is creep so in order to reduce the creep we are using the high grade of concrete in the pre-stress concrete next problem we have been provided with a simply supported rcc beam which is under reinforced so based on this two statements have been provided and we have to identify which one is true and which one is false so first statement is that in case of rcc beam which is under reinforced the failure takes place by crushing of concrete before the steel has yielded now we know that whenever we go for the design of rcc beam we try to keep it as under reinforced section because in under reinforced section we get the advantage that first the steel will fail and after that the concrete will fail now this condition is desired because whenever the steel will fail we know that the bending of the bars can be easily identified so it gives us an indication or the sign of failure so from the safety point of view we want that the steel should fail first and this is true in the case of under reinforced beam sections now here the statement which is given to us that is completely opposite it is saying that first the failure of the concrete will happen and then the steel will fail but in reality in case of the under reinforced rcc beam first the steel will fail and then the concrete will fail later on 
so that means my statement one is false now coming to the second statement which says that the neutral axis moves up as the load is increased so this statement is true because we know that when the load is going to get increased on neutral axis that will start shifting in the upward direction so the correct answer for ninth problem will be my first statement is false but second statement is true that is option a now question number 10 it is given that the slump of the concrete is 65 mm so under which category it will be classified so when the slump will be 65 mm it will fall in the category of plastic concrete so option a will be the correct answer here next problem we have to design the footing for two columns which are carrying certain load and are spaced at a distance of 3 meters center to center the property of the soil is given that is SBC which is the safe bearing capacity of soil is 200 kilo newton per meter square and the width of the footing is restricted to 2 meter due to the site condition so which type of footing we should provide in such a condition that we have to identify now here no need to do any kind of calculation so much data has been provided to us but there is no need to calculate anything because we know that when two columns are closely spaced in that case either we provide rectangular combined footing or we go for the trapezoidal combined footing so by seeing the option there is only one option which matches that is option a so we can go for rectangular slab type rectangular footing so this is the footing which we can adopt in such a case next three statements are given to us and we have to identify which statements are correct so first statement is that in order to calculate the specific area of the cement the test that we conduct is called as air permeability method or air permeability test so this statement is correct next is in order to calculate the soundness of the cement the test that we adopt is called as leach atelier's method this statement is also correct and last one is the total insoluble residue in the cement should be less than 1.5 percent so this statement is also correct so all three statements are correct over here so my answer will be option d now coming to the next problem where we have to calculate the bulking of the sand in percentage so bulking is basically the phenomena when the moisture content in the sand is about four to six percent so that time the volume of the sand increases drastically so that time we call that the sand is undergoing the bulking process so how much the bulking will be that we have to calculate so let's see how this bulking will be calculated here so bulking will be given as the depth of the moist sand which is given as 150 mm minus the depth of the sand when it is fully saturated with water so that depth is 120 mm so when the sand is moist that time volume is more so depth is also more but when it is fully saturated the volume will reduce and the depth will also reduce so it is 120 mm and this thing we are measuring with respect to the final value so divided by 120 mm multiply by 100 so on solving this will be 30 upon 120 multiply by 100 which comes out as 25 percent so correct answer is option b then coming to 14th problem so in 14 we have to calculate the mu limiting value that means moment of resistance for the balance section we have to calculate so for this we have a direct formula that is mu limiting is equal to 0.36 fck xu limiting divided by d 1 minus 0.42 xu limiting divided by d multiply by bd square so here we can substitute the values so we have been provided with 0.36 fck fck is given as 20 now xu limiting so xu limiting in this case will be 0 0.48 times of d why because the grade of the steel is 415 so as per limit state method it is given as 0 0.48 times of d so this d and d in numerator denominator will cancel 1 minus 0 0.42 again 0 0.48 times of d again 
पॉइंट फोर एट टाइम्स ऑफ डी डिवाइड बाई डी इन टू बी डी स्क्वेयर सो बी वैल्यू इज थ्री हंड्रेड एंड डी वैल्यू इज फाइव फोर्टी फाइव स्क्वेयर सो हम सॉल्विंग दिस इट विल कम आउट टू बी टू फोर्टी फाइव पॉइंट एट सेवन किलो न्यूटन मीटर सो वी कैन अप्रॉक्सीमेट इट टू टू फोर्टी सिक्स किलो न्यूटन मीटर सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी ऑप्शन बी टू फोर्टी सिक्स किलो न्यूटन मीटर कमिंग टू फिफ्टीन इन फिफ्टीन द एक्स वाई एंड जेड आर गिवन एज द फाइनस मॉड्यूलस ऑफ कोर्स फाइन एंड कंबाइंड एग्रीगेट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट वॉट इज द परसेंटेज ऑफ फाइन एग्रीगेट टू द टोटल एग्रीगेट्स और द कम्बाइंड एग्रीगेट्स सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन ए वेयर पी इज इक्वल टू एक्स माइनस जेड अपॉन जेड माइनस वाई मल्टीप्लाई बाई हंड्रेड बिकॉज इट हैज टू बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन परसेंटेज नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम सिक्सटींथ अ रेक्टेंगुलर बीम इज गिवन इफेक्टिव कवर इज गिवन एफ सी के एफ वाई वैल्यूज आर ऑल्सो नोन एंड वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग टू लेगेड एट एम एम स्टेरा सो दे आर आस्किंग अस वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट वट शुड बी द मैक्सिमम स्पेसिंग एज पर द क्लॉज ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट वन पॉइंट सिक्स इट इज नॉट सिक्सटीन इट इज वन पॉइंट सिक्स सो एज पर दिस क्लॉज वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट वट इज द मैक्सिमम स्पेसिंग सो वट डज दिस क्लॉज सेज इट सेज दैट द एरिया ऑफ द स्टेरअप्स डिवाइडेड बाय द वेथ ऑफ द बी मल्टीप्लाई बाय द स्पेसिंग ऑफ द स्टेरअप्स शुड बी ग्रेटर देन जीरो पॉइंट फोर डिवाइडेड बाय जीरो पॉइंट एट सेवन मल्टीप्लाई बाय एफ वाई सो फ्रॉम हेयर वील गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ द मैक्सिमम स्पेसिंग दैट इज अलाउड सो एरिया ऑफ स्टेरअप्स इज टू टाइम्स ऑफ वाई टू बिकॉज इट इज टू लेगेड area will be pi by 4 into d square d is given as 8 mm divided by width of the beam which is 300 multiply by sv that is unknown should be greater than 0.4 divided by 0.87 multiply by fy which is 415 so on solving this the final value will be sv should be less than or equal to 302. 47 एम mm. so if I look at the options, so option A will be the correct option because my spacing should be less than 302.47. so the maximum spacing which we can provide is 302 एम mm. although we know that when we are designing the stirrups, the maximum spacing should not exceed 300 हंड्रेड एम एम सो आइडली माई आंसर शुड बी वॉट माई आंसर शुड बी थ्री हंड्रेड एम एम वी कैन नॉट गो बी ऑन दैट but here specifically they have mentioned you have to calculate as per this clause so as per this clause i am getting this value that my spacing should be less than 302.47 so we can provide the value as 302 mm now the next problem is from the environmental engineering where we have to calculate the mean velocity gradient which is used in the design of flocculation process so we know that this g which is our mean velocity gradient is given as under root of the power input divided by the dynamic viscosity of the water multiply by the volume of the water in the mixing tank so from here we get this formula so option d is the correct answer for this problem next is we have to identify which is the major pollutant that is obtained from the waste water of a tannery industry now what is tannery industry this is basically the industry where the leather is produced from the animal skin so here the major pollutant that we obtain is the chromium so option d is the correct answer for 18th 19th problem now here we have to identify which of the following equation represents the hoop tension in the pipe of the water supply system so here in the strength of material we have studied that the hoop stress is given as pd upon 2t so the correct answer is again option d now next problem as per is 2296 under category d the water can be classified as so the water which is under the category d can be used for the fish culture and the wildlife propagation so option a is the correct answer for 20th next one is a easy question where they are asking that the composting of municipal solid waste is which type of process so we know that when we are doing the composting 
सो बेसिकली वी आर डिकम्पोजिंग दी ऑर्गेनिक मैटर बाय दी बायोलॉजिकल एक्टिविटी सो बायोलॉजिकल प्रोसेस इज दी करेक्ट आंसर फॉर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज अगेन फ्रॉम दी एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग वेर दे आर आस्किंग द सैंड बेड्स ऑफ अ रेपिड एंड फिल्टर आर विच अमंग दी फॉलोइंग सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस इज ऑप्शन ए वी जनरली प्रोवाइड स्ट्रेटिफाइड बेड्स इन द केस ऑफ रेपिड सैंड फिल्टर नेक्स्ट इज ट्वेंटी थर्ड प्रॉब्लम द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द स्मॉग इन द एटमोसफेयर इज ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी वेन एवर द सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड एंड पार्टिकुलेट मेटर टेन कंसनट्रेशन इज हाई इन द एटमोसफेयर देन द स्मॉग इज फॉर्म नेक्स्ट इज ट्वेंटी फोर हेयर वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट फॉर्मूला एज पर द नेशनल बोर्ड ऑफ फायर अंडर राइटर्स सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर्थ इज ऑप्शन सी नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ सो हेयर वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द मास कर्व एनालिसिस सो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज द स्लोप ऑफ मास कर्व एट एनी पॉइंट इज अ मेजर ऑफ इनफ्लो रेट एट दैट टाइम सो इफ वी ड्रॉ अ टेंजेंट टू द मास कर्व देन द स्लोप ऑफ दैट टेंजेंट विल टेल अस वॉट इज द इनफ्लो रेट सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट कमिंग टू सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट The maximum departure between the demand line and the mass curve. That means the maximum distance between the demand line and the mass curve. It tells us about the storage capacity of the reservoir required to meet the demand. This statement is also correct. Now coming to the third one, a demand line must intersect the mass curve when extended forward. Otherwise, the reservoir is not going to refill. This statement is also true. Coming to fourth one, the vertical distance between the tangents drawn through the trough and the crest represent the water wasted over spillway. Now this statement is incorrect because here what has been written is that if we draw the tangent to the trough and crest, and the distance between the tangent will represent the wasted water. But in actual, when we draw the tangents, that tangent should be drawn to two simultaneous troughs. so the distance between the two tangents which have been drawn for the two simultaneous troughs that will indicate the water wasted over the spillway so this statement is incorrect and this will be our answer for problem number 25 next one is 26th here we have to calculate how much is the speed of the turbine when we are changing the head so initial head and initial speed in rpm is known to us but now we are changing the head then what will be the expected speed of the turbine that we have to calculate so the concept involved here is n1 upon root h1 is equal to n2 upon root h2 so here we can substitute the value suppose n1 is unknown so here corresponding to that the head available is 81 so this is 81 N2 is given as 200 rpm and head available is 100. So on solving this, we will get N1 upon 9 is equal to 20 upon 10. So N1 value will be 180, 180 rpm. So option B is the correct answer for this. Now coming to next 27. This is from hydrology. So for our unit hydrograph, peak is given to us. so this is basically a flood hydrograph so peak of flood hydrograph is known so peak of flood hydrograph is given as 250 meter cube per second and also the base flow is given as 10 meter cube per second so base flow is 10 meter cube per second this is also known so from here we can obtain what will be the peak of peak of drh direct run of hydrograph so the difference of these two is 240 so 240 meter cube per second is the peak of drh but here we have to calculate the peak of unit hydrograph so peak of unit hydrograph will be nothing it will be the peak of drh which is 240 divided by the run of depth you have to divide it by run of depth and to calculate the run of depth some data has been provided so run of depth will be given as rainfall minus the infiltration loss so rainfall is given as 5 cm infiltration loss is 1 so this will be 
4 centimeter. So if I divide this 240 by 4, I'll get the peak of unit hydrograph. So peak of unit hydrograph will be 240 divided by 4, which is 60 meter cube per second. So correct answer is option A. Now next is 28th. So two orifices which are having diameter of 2 cm and 4 cm have been provided and they have been placed at different heights. One is at a height of H1, the other is at height of H2. And it has been said that the discharge which we are obtaining from both the orifices is same and the coefficient of discharge is also same. So we need to calculate what is the ratio of H1 and H2. So here we'll be using this simple equation that discharge is given as CD which is coefficient of discharge multiplied by velocity. Velocity is given as under root 2GH multiplied by area. Now in problem the discharge from both the orifices is given same that means Q1 is equal to Q2. So here we can substitute the values now. So Q1 will be written as CD into under root 2G H1 multiplied by A1. So area can be written as pi by 4 into D1 square and for second one it will be written as CD under root 2G H2 into pi by 4 into D2 square. Now we can substitute the values but first cancel the terms which are common. So CD and CD will cancel under root 2G and under root 2G will cancel pi by 4 and pi by 4 will cancel. So we are left with under root H1 into D1 square. So D1 will be written as 2 square diameter is 2 centimeter for second one it will be under root of h2 this is h2 multiply by d2 square which is 4 square so from here i get under root h1 divided by under root h2 is equal to 16 divided by 4 which will be equal to 4 so squaring on both sides h1 by h2 will come out as 16 so 16 is to 1 is the correct option which is our option b now coming to 29, it is a very straightforward question. So here they are asking for the most efficient trapezoidal channel section whose depth is y, what will be its area? So directly we need to remember such cases. So correct answer for this is option C, root 3 y square. Next is 30, a hydraulic jump is occurring at the downstream from a sluice gate. The depth at this Lewis gate is given as 1.5 meter and velocity is 20 meter per second. We have to calculate how much power is getting dissipated by this hydraulic jump. So now let's solve this problem. So first of all, we will be calculating the fraud number and with the help of the fraud number, we will be calculating the conjugate depth that is Y2. Once we have value of Y1 and Y2, we can calculate the energy loss that is happening. So let's calculate. So fraud number. 1 is equal to V1 upon under root G Y1. So from here if we substitute this will be 20 divided by 9.81 multiplied by 1.5. So on solving this value comes out to be 5.213. Now we know this equation that Y2 upon Y1 is 1 by 2 under root of 1 plus 8 fr1 square minus 1 this equation is known to us this is the relationship between y2 and y1 so y2 divided by y1 which is 1.5 meter that is the initial depth which is equal to 1 by 2 under root of 1 plus 8 fraud number square so fraud number we have already calculated 5.213 square minus 1 so from here the value of y2 on solving it comes out to be 10.33 meters next part we, which we can calculate here is the energy loss so energy loss is y2 minus y1 divided by 4 y1 y2 and cube of numerator so on substituting we get 10.333 which is the value of y2 y1 is 1.5 divided by 4 times of 1.5 into 10.33 and cube of numerator so on solving this this comes out to be 11.115 meter 
but they have asked us you need to calculate the power and it should be watts megawatts so here we have calculated the energy loss in terms of depth so in order to calculate the power we'll be using this formula rho into g into q multiplied by h so here on substituting the density of water is 1000 g is 9.81 the value of q q is area into velocity so area will be 1.5 into width of sluice gate so 1.5 is depth 15 is the width of sluice gate so this becomes my area multiplied by velocity which is given as 20 multiply by head so total head loss how much it is happening 11.115 11.115 so on solving this the value comes out to be 49.06 into 10 raised to power 6 watts but answer has been asked in megawatts so it will become 49.06 megawatts so if we go by the options so option c will be the correct answer for this that is 49.1 megawatt so here in this particular video we have discussed about 30 numericals from the kptcl assistant engineer exam for civil engineering further questions will be discussing in the coming up videos and i hope that you people must have done well in the exam i wish you all good luck